2025 Nobel Prize in Physics was just announced, and it awards one of the most foundational papers to quantum computing. Specifically, it demonstrated for the first time quantum tunneling in a macroscopic superconducting circuit. The paper, titled Energy Level Quantization in the Zero Voltage State of a Current Bias Josephson Junction, was published 40 years ago in 1985 by Michel Deveret, John Martinez, and John Clark, three pioneers who have gone on to have rich careers in quantum computing. Michel Deveret is now the chief scientist of Google Quantum AI, the research team behind the Google Willow chip and quantum error correction, where he worked with John Martinez, who is also an emeritus professor at University of California, Santa Barbara. John Clark is one of the earliest pioneers in quantum computing and an emeritus professor at UC Berkeley. But that's enough background on the laureates. Let's take a look at the paper. In this paper, for the first time, the team revealed the quantum nature of Josephson junction-based circuits. You can think of a Josephson junction as a superconductor sandwich. By taking two superconducting wires, which conduct electricity with zero resistance, and separating them by an insulating barrier, often called a weak link, one can make a Josephson junction. Usually, this is done with aluminum as the superconductor and aluminum oxide as the insulator. These Josephson junctions, even despite the insulating barrier, still carry supercurrent through them due to quantum tunneling through the weak link. What does that mean? Well, let's look closer. In the superconductor, electrons are described by wave functions. These wave functions, which are mathematical functions that describe the probability that an electron is in a specific location, have a central peak and then decay to zero as you go far away from the center. If we look through the insulating barrier, the wave function doesn't go all the way to zero. Rather, it decays significantly, but still has some very small non-zero value on the opposite side of the barrier. Thus, if the insulating barrier is thin enough, the superconducting electrons can tunnel across the barrier, maintaining some supercurrent. While this is a quantum effect and was already known by the time this paper was published, it was not immediately clear what would happen when embedding a Josephson junction into a circuit. This is the innovation of the Nobel Prize winning team. They created the first superconducting circuit with a Josephson junction, showing that the quantum behavior of the Cooper pairs and Josephson junctions extended to the full circuit. In other words, the circuit had quantized energy levels. What do I mean by quantized energy levels? Well, in the same way that electrons and atoms have only very specific orbits that they can occupy, known as orbitals, with very specific values of energy, the circuit showed quantized energy levels associated with the flow of current through its components. These properties can be shown by sending in single microwave photons into a circuit. The circuit then absorbs these single photons and jumps to a higher energy level, much in the same way an electron can absorb a photon of visible light and jump to a higher energy level. Now, only instead of sending in visible light, you're sending in microwaves. This may seem like an interesting curiosity, and a cool scientific discovery, but it's much more than that. This discovery effectively enabled the entire field of superconducting quantum computing. Superconducting qubits are used by IBM, Google, and many other companies, and are currently the main frontrunner in the quantum race. Modern-day superconducting qubits rely heavily on the principles discovered in this paper. In fact, one of the next innovations in superconducting qubits, the invention of the transmon qubit, was also pioneered by Michel Deveret, one of the three prize winners this year. But that's a story for when he wins his second Nobel Prize. Suffice it to say that not only was this paper a foundational physics discovery, it was also foundational to the entire field of superconducting quantum computing. If this video is interesting to you, please let me know. I like to cover news in quantum computing as it comes out, but making these videos takes time and I don't have a large production team behind me. So unfortunately, I'm not as quick to the party as some. That said, thank you for watching, and if you want to hear more about news in quantum, let me know by leaving a comment below. With that, I've been Lucas, this has been Lucas's Lab, and thanks for watching.